time is such a waste of time. Yeah. It's a line from the workbook, and um, it's, it's more that you go deeper and deeper and deeper in listening to the fall of the Holy Spirit, and then that's, that's more at the end, at the end of the ride. Uh, you can't grasp it from the middle of, during the ride, because the, that's really the whole point. Um, the script is written, when we brought it up before, we, this week we talked about the emphasis was on the last word written, meaning the script is the past. And that's really what the workbook is designed to do, that if you actually follow the workbook lessons and you go deeply into them and into the experience, uh, one of, probably of all the 365 lessons, the lesson that's most clearly leading you to the script is written is, is lesson number seven, I see only the past. And he talks at the beginning of the workbook by saying, we need new time ideas. The ego has tricked us into believing in linear time. And that is, I just sent out a music video, I don't know if any of you saw it on my Facebook, it was that one about uh, the symphony of time. Uh, it's a beautiful kind of rhythmic uh, music video that's really pointing to this idea that that the small I, the personality self, exists in the fabric of linear time. And there's really no difference between that. We tend to think of human beings as, as being part of time and then dying and maybe going somewhere else. But the very construct of what it means to be a human being involves linear time. And the ego invented linear time. There is no linear time in eternity. And then part of uh, linear time is, is it's a three-part construct. It's got the past, the present, and the future. And the present is in between the past and the future. Like when we go to history class and they draw the big line on the blackboard, that's entirely fabricated. And the reason that the, the ego invented time and space in linear time was, guess what, to keep the mind guilty. That you're guilty for what you did wrong in the past. The present moment is ineffectual, you have no, it has no power to change anything. It's like this tiny little blip that just gets rolled right over. There's a little blip on the line. And the future will be more of the same from the past. And this is why, from that linear construct, it's not even surprising that people in different traditions that are very devoted, you know, Christians and Muslims and Hindus and so forth, believe that a concept like eternal damnation, uh, hell, that you could go to hell, because the ego invented this timeline for that very purpose, that you're guilty in the past, the present moment is completely ineffectual, you can't do anything about it, and the guilt will continue on in the future, and ultimately that you have to pay a price for all this guilt. That's how it's designed. The ego wants you to feel like there's no escape, so the ego will say, you surely don't think God's just going to let you get away with all this guilt. You know, you, all this pain and suffering and guilt, all this wrongdoing, uh, God's not just going to at the very end go, oh well, you really messed up all the way through, but uh, I forgive you and let you back in. So the, even the concept of the hellfire concept, Jesus calls it, of, of hell and damnation, it all fits in with this linear concept of time. And the, A Course in Miracles workbook is designed to show you that everything that you perceive, everything in the whole cosmos, without exception, is the past. And then to let it go, you know. To, now just imagine if, if Jesus is right, if he's really training us to see that everything's the past, then we would start to see that everything's the same, because it's all the past. So there would be no hierarchy of what is the same. There would be no judgment of what is the same. There would be no preferences of what is the same. There would be no expectations of what is all the same. You can see where that is taking us into a trained re reinterpretation of the world where 
we actually can see the sameness of the world because it's all the past. And that's where the script is written line comes in. It's, it's like it's a prearranged script. I was saying last night that the entire script spun out in one instant. And it was answered immediately by the Holy Spirit. So that's why we could say with honesty that past is over, it can touch me not. Even when we go to self-help groups and support groups and whatever, everyone is always working at letting go of the past. Letting go of the regrets of the past, the harmful things, the wounds of the past, the grievances of the past. But it's, it's like flypaper. It's so sticky that as long as you believe any of it's really true, then the future will just play out kind of in a karmic sense of just repeating the past. The same error just repeats over and over and over. There's one point, I believe it was in Absence from Felicity, it didn't make it into the published course, but actually Jesus told Helen one time, history would not exist if you didn't keep making the same mistake in the present. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't in the published course, but Jesus told that to Helen, and if that isn't a Groundhog Day statement, mm -hmm. you know, how on Groundhog Day he, <clears throat> he, he gets caught in the loop of time, and he feels depressed, suicidal, hopeless, because it he can't find an escape out of it, and it's just like the same day repeating over and over and over. Well, we don't seem to have the exact same day repeating over and over, but we have a lot of common elements that just repeat over and over, and we do seem to repeat patterns over and over. It can be patterns over a lifetime where somebody says, I, I got married four times, I married four alcoholics. I mean, what are the chances of that? <laughs> Uh, you know, but, and yet then they go to Al-Anon or different meetings, Alcoholics Anonymous, and they listen to the story. <laughs> you too? <laughs> and you too? Hmm. Something's going on. There's like a loop. What are the chances of doing that? Well, the mind, when it's in its deceived state, is just drawing forth witnesses, and the same patterns just continue. And we all can relate to that in some way or another. You know, we may have an issue that seems to come up and just smack us upside the head over and over. And it really gets our attention, you know, like, okay, I need some forgiveness work here. I need to heal something. It just keeps coming in my face. So, so that's really what the script is written is about. And, and I'll, I will say as well that, that the script is written, the, the very word script is a very linear word. And there is an experience that, that goes beyond the script is written, and I call that simultaneity. Some of you might have heard of like Seth material, or there's lots of metaphysical teachings that teach that time is simultaneous and not linear. Well, boy, does that take care of the script is written. Uh, that's even an experience that would transcend that very idea. So the script is written is just another metaphor along the, the rungs of the ladder in there, but ultimately to come to atonement is, is to come then beyond that into a, an experience of simultaneity. And then beyond that, of course, is God. God isn't simultaneous because there's not many things happening at once in God. There's not many. <laughs> it's just pure, abstract oneness and love. So you might say you go from from believing linear time, to the script is written, to simultaneity, to bliss, oneness, pure abstract light. Not with many things happening at once. Not No parallel universes in heaven. No plural, no multiplicity in heaven. Just pure, pure abstract oneness. And we all have that kind of duh look on our face because there's nothing in this world <laughs> that begins to show us that. There is nothing. Like when I use the word abstract, sometimes people think of, oh, abstract, where have I heard that word before? Like abstract art. Yeah, you're not going to go in a museum <laughs> and perceive oneness hanging on the wall. I'll tell you that much. It is just not going to happen. It doesn't work. Even the words that we come up with in this world, like abstract, it's just a word for non-specific. 
But what in all of time and space is non-specific? Nothing. <laughs> There's nothing here that's non-specific. Everything is specific. So that's why we just keep, we give ourselves over to that workbook and we say, take me, Lord, you know the way. And I will experience that when I'm ready to experience it and when I'm willing. Um, I will experience that. So the actual experience of the script is written is, a, is an experience. It's not, it's not like an intellectual concept that we can grasp. So even when the ego studies the Course and goes to a certain point and goes, I don't get that. Of course it doesn't <laughs> get it. <laughs> the ego's not going to get anything, really. But, but we keep giving ourselves over to the Holy Spirit and saying, take me into an experience. And that's exactly what you've done with coming here for this uh, week. You know, that was the prayer of your heart. Take me into that deeper experience of that connection. And, and whatever we desire in our heart, our prayers are answered. Yeah, that's really beautiful to think about that. that you just prayed the, prayed the prayer and then the Holy Spirit said, yeah, try this. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. Time is such a waste of time